you so much for uh, having me here. It's a pleasure to be here talking to fellow entrepreneurs. All our entrepreneurs, budding, all of, all of them? Aspiring entrepreneurs? Wonderful. And uh, in fact, Entrepreneurs was, first, uh, was uh, one of the first magazines I have taken the subscription, I think around 15 years ago when they have launched in India. And I was so happy to come to this forum and speak. Ankush Sabarwal, founder CEO of Codeover, uh, which is a conversational AI platform now powered by Gen AI BioGPT. I think let me start saying we are in the best times, especially in India. Who can, uh, which can be a better country than India who can have the best AI platforms in the world? Why? As we know, the ingredient for any AI platform is data. And we produce data by just living life. We produce data by just consuming applications, either as individuals or as businesses. AI platforms, we are doing great. Uh, you would see in the papers, everyone is trying to come up with LLMs, platforms. We have enough technology. Now coming to the applications, I think again, which can be the better or the best country again to have the AI applications than India. I'm not seeing the acceptability these Indians have. As we know, 1.4 billion handsets India has and around 800 million internet users. Give any application, everyone wants to test. UPI, I think around 400, 450 million users in India. I think if you create something really meaningful, we have audience to test, use, and scale. Again, we are in the best times and the best country. Let's see this topic given to me. How can we leverage a native AI in business? Few, few, few key questions. Questions are very important. Uh, I think we will understand. Do we really need new technology? Enough of technology, right? Thanks to chat GPTs, it has given us the confidence. It has given, given us the capabilities to really think we can create something like chat GPT generates. I remember when we started this journey around seven years ago, I used to tell my clients, we don't manufacture answers. When they were saying, no, this answer is not good, I said, this is given by your team. We don't manufacture answers, I used to say that, right? We don't generate answers, but now we do. Now we have to keep thinking and building new technology or we have to start using. Yeah, so technology is important, but I think I would suggest everyone who is here, uh, believe in yourself, believe in what you're doing, and see whether existing technology can be used or not. I know the tech entrepreneurship is important. We keep trying to build new tech, new innovation. But I, though I'm a tech entrepreneur, we keep doing innovation. But that's not for everyone, right? So now there is enough technology. Again and again, I'm saying we have to just leverage and see how we can use in our existing businesses. We'll talk about it. It's very, very important, right? So I think the people who understand user experience. So when we see the user experience and we say, no, this is not good. So our hat there is mainly of the global audience, but India is a little different, right? So user experience, what we create, say, for India, may not be that, may not be that of global appeal, right? We have to understand. To give you a context, we have got 1.3 billion users who are using our virtual assistant, and we might not have the best user experience, but it works in India. Let's see how we can use existing technology. I think you would have seen this uh, in the WhatsApp, right? So there's a lot of hype uh, and the reality. So what is hype? What's the reality? It's getting normalized. I think it'll still take around five to six months or probably a little more to settle. So now are we done with the technology, start using or we'll wait for new technology to be adopted? Sweet spot, I think we have to figure that out. Let's not trust others, media to tell us what works, what doesn't work. If you believe your business, what you want to achieve, where you want to improve, and then see whether you want to use any existing technology I want to create it. 
I think this is, would only be for AI folks. I think if you follow this hype chart of uh, Gartner, sorry, it's, it's blur. You can check in your Google uh, hype chart. Uh, this is the recent one, 2023. I think 2024 has not come yet. There is no NLP here, right? We used to see whether NLP is maturing or not. I think it, if you see their NLP, yeah, so NLP had not achieved the maturity last year. Now it's out of this hype chart. Uh, it, it's not talked about. I think you would not have probably noticed it. It's, it's not in the hype chart now. I think it's disruption, right? So if you remember, if you had done masters in management, if you studied management, entrepreneurship, so there were external factors which we used to study. I used to remember like best political, economic, social, and technological disruptions. So that's first three are fine. So if war happens or uh, two countries are discussing and some trade agreements come in, we understand and we have seen COVID also. But had you ever seen the technological external factors, probably the people when the industrialization happened that time people had seen our forefathers, that disruption. And now that disruption is there with AI and Gen AI. It's very interesting. I think we should know when, uh, again, when clients come to us and uh, they say, hey, we want to use Gen AI. People come saying they know they, they, they want to use Gen AI. I'm sure you are in the business, you would know. People have kind of uh, already made up their mind they have to use Gen AI. Now they are trying to figure out which problem to solve. Right? Otherwise, what's the natural way? You have a problem and you see how to solve it. You see whether there's any existing technology. Maybe you compare which is the best technology and you try to use the best one. But here the solution is already figured out. It's Gen AI. Now which problem to solve? It's taking more than a year for us to convince clients and tell them probably this is the use case you need to adopt. But where the Gen AI is used the most is not to reduce the cost. Right? A lot of hype about it, jobs would be gone and uh, any anyone of you have kind of fired people because you are using Gen AI? Anyone? Yeah, so I'm sure it will never happen. See, we are in the business for what? What is the definition of business? For profit, for sure. But if you go to VCs or you talk, it's, we always talk about the growth. We want to grow. <coughs> want to grow, right? So if we you reduce the manpower and then means we don't want to grow, we just want to reduce the cost. That's not we started the business for. The business is of course to achieve the prof profitability and grow year and year. Yes, if you are achieving efficiency, you have people, provided you have hired the right people with good aptitude, attitude. Yes, few jobs, few functions can be displaced, can be replaced with AI, but if you are good people and you want to grow, you can leverage them. But this, this is data. 38% of the companies are using Gen AI not to reduce costs, not to increase revenue, just to make their customers happy. Of course, revenue growth and cost optimization is just 17%. So source is gotten. Gen AI can do all of that. Debatable. The reasoning, I doubt, but yes. It's very interesting. So. Uh, so what is, the, what is the natural, I'll come back to this, what is the natural way of doing commerce? Digital commerce or physical commerce. What is the natural way? We go to a store and we see stuff and we speak and buy. And any guess is how much is digital commerce in India? How much is e-commerce, digital commerce in India? How much percentage? Seven, eight percent. It just, yeah, you're close. It's just 5% and grocery buying is, I think, less than 0.5%. It's still 5% and we, in the metros, we think it's saturated market. We have Amazon and Flipkart, so the word, and it's saturated. So it's just 5%. Why? And most of our, we technologists and innovators, we try to uh, create better flows, sometimes better user experience, and, you know, we get maybe 10% growth and we think, hey, you know, we are on the right track, we are doing innovation. And we are trying to capture that, trying that 5%, 5% of the shares. 
uh, of that digital commerce. How about the 95%? Why they are not coming to this form? So it did not just come with the marketing. So, so 95%, how do we capture that? I think we'll be able to capture that 95. That's what we are trying to attempt. So that will be able to do only when we understand what is the natural way and what the way which we have created as technologists. So now, uh, if you go to, you can try opening from Flipkart or Amazon or any e-commerce portal if you open in mobile phone or even desktop, you will you'll see 8 to 10 products, 8 to 10 products, maybe 15 products in one glance. And what happens when you, when you actually go to the store? You will see hundreds of products, no? So with your direct vision and with your peripheral vision, I think around 270 degree, if not 270, 180 degree, you'll be able to see. This is natural way. Oh, okay, I need to get slippers, no shoe. So this is this is the natural way. Right. So 95 percent is doing this kind of commerce. So now, if we try to bring the physical form digitally. I might be biased saying that voice commerce, video commerce and what some company does. You say, hey, we have a green jacket, batana. show me that green jacket, what is the price? Get it, Achha, mujhe de do. can you give me a discount? Ar ek or de do. So you can actually do the commerce the way you do with actual store. I'm not saying we'll get 95%, but maybe 5 to 10%. 5 to maybe 15 percent, at least we get new horizons to actually use our skills and use our uh, business acumen for instead of just limited to this 5 percent which is already tax savvy and early adopters and people in the metro and they're ready to experiment and I think most of the companies when they start they target around 5 to 6 crore users, consumers in India. I think that's a maximum that which we consider. Why not? I'm not saying you consider 140 crores, but why not 300 crore, uh, uh, 30, 30 crores, 300 million? Okay. I think for that we have to think beyond the product management what we study, uh, beyond the management uh, books we uh, read. I think just see the physical thing what is happening and try to match your tech. So another example I can say, BMG, so literally, the way I'm speaking, the way I speak with the store, I should be able to do with digital commerce. And now you know the Gen AI use cases. You say I want to eat probably pasta and it will find out which are the ingredients and even can order if you have the right APIs. So this was just another use case. Give the photo and give you recipe what to make. You can find multiple AI use cases. I think this is the country we can create applications to be used in India and the world. Enough of technology. I know a lot of technologies are trying to create technology. We have enough technology. I keep saying when Java came into the world and C++ came, so did we try to create another Java++? Right? We, we try to use Java for sure. We try to use Java to create applications. I think now we have enough technology and we should start. Even if you are a tech heavy company, still try to create the use cases, small products with the existing technology. Let that to be used, let people get benefit just with the tech and just with the platforms. Uh, we'll not be able to empower citizens, empower society, empower nation and the world with the solutions. I think if you can think about the solutions, we should be able to. Just one case study, if you see IRCTC, I can say ki mujhe Delhi se Ghaziabad ki parsu ki train ticket book karwani hai. Or mujhe Delhi se Bombay ki 25 March ki train ticket book karwani in multiple languages will be able to do. The, the trust, trust part is also very important. Right? We know ki wo bhaiya mujhe galat saman nahi dega. Main usse lo. So we can have kind of virtual assistant. Sorry, I'm again biased. So we have the credibility and trust of that person. So we can create virtual assistant. We now, now have the deep fakes. So I'm not saying keep creating deep fakes. Keep, create deep fakes for the right purpose and with the consent and give the credibility and trust. So again, very natural way when we come up with a business, we have values, mission, vision, and we have actions, KPIs, and actions can be any. It can be retention, growth, it can be growth and saving cost. You have to pick up one. So say if this is a value chain, you get the inventory, you process it, sell it, market it. 
So it just becomes a marketing function. So no AI, no Gen AI, this is the natural uh, course of business. We're just trying to highlight a marketing function. And marketing also has multiple sub-functions. You want to acquire customers, you know, engage with them, probably try to retain them. Just pick up customer acquisition. And again, we have multiple stuff. You create a strategy, you create the campaigns, and do the lead management, and do all of that. No AI, it's a basic. You can have probably more sub-functions or less. So now if you see, uh, just pick up, say, one uh, function uh, within marketing campaign effectiveness. You see why uh, you're not getting leads. What could be the problem? Product is not good, feedback is not good. Maybe you're not able to reach the right uh, leads. Whether the messaging is not correct. And if you say narrow down with your Excel sheets or whatever tool you're using, and you see, maybe pick one problem. Maybe the problem is we are not doing personalization enough to do the right campaign so that audience is not able to connect and come to you. And now probably can think of, uh, it's a typo, it's NLP and NLG. So you can say, use Gen AI there to create personalized messages, personalized campaign. Uh, that's an example where you try to do the campaign effectiveness, use Gen AI to create personalized messages. Okay, so uh, so if you have to do personalization, you see the social media content, websites, and any um, data you have with your customers, and then you try to uh, see whether where it is helping in your value chain. So what I was trying to say, this whatever I've created, I've really created based on my interaction with the clients. We have 500 plus inbound leads. They want to use Gen AI, and not I think maybe only 90% of the companies know where to use it, they just want to use it. So I think the best way is you see your value analysis, you see where are the gaps, or where are the problems, and see then where you can use Gen AI. And then there are a lot of Gen AI companies, talk to them, go with a specific problem, and then you try to find the solution. And we have seen practically it helps our customers or anyone who uses AI improve the top line, bottom line, make their customers happy and get better retention. I think I have less time, uh, Bharat GPT, yes, uh, we launched India's own large language model. Uh, it's integrated with any virtual assistant we create. Uh, you can go to your website, go to .ai and uh, see that. And we are also now giving limited edition free. Sorry, it's not a marketing uh, stuff, but uh, my message is again about uh, you should know what you're doing and just see uh, where are the gaps, where are the areas you want to improve and then use AI, Gen AI instead of someone is using it and you want to use it. No, because even technologists are not aware where this product is going to be used. Right? Uh, so you should know as a business owner where you have to leverage the technology. Thank you so much.